Okay, this is the second part of the video for uh, Dana. Uh, what we've done so far is we've fixed a, a sketch doodle that uh, was a JPEG image. I'm guessing it was scanned, or maybe it had, uh, maybe they used a digital camera to take a picture of it. But anyway, the paper looked brown, and what we did is we cleaned all the brown out of the paper. Um, and now what I've done is I've opened the image in Illustrator here. So you'll get your image open in Illustrator. Uh, it's, it's probably going to be pretty small by default. So what you're going to want to do is, it uh, doesn't matter where it's at, but you're going to want to resize it. And if you hold in the shift button, as you drag the corner, it keeps the aspect ratio. Okay. So the larger we resize it actually here in Illustrator, uh, the larger it'll be when we're done. So like I said, uh, this is the part that uh, you'll use if you actually want to resize an image. Uh, this is a really cool thing that I, I use for a lot of different uh, pieces of artwork. And uh, uh, let me show you how I do it here. Okay, so you got your image open. You've resized it to the pretty much the size you want it to be. I know it's kind of hard to tell here uh, exactly what size it will be. Um, but if you look up here at the top, uh, there's some X and Ys, which shows you the location on the screen. Uh, the width shows you how many pixels wide your image has been resized to, and the height here shows you that. So if you ever need to know. Uh, but anyway, we've got the image resized. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to Object, Live Trace, Tracing Options. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to apply uh, a tracing effect without actually having to trace the photo. Okay? The first thing you're going to want to do is once your screen's open for tracing options, go ahead and click the preview. And uh, I don't know if you can tell already or not, but now this photo that Cabe has sketched now has a very uh, softer look and feel to it just by using the default settings from clicking uh, Preview under uh, Tracing Options. So if you're happy with that, you can click Trace. But uh, just for the heck of it, since we've got you this far, I'll go ahead and show you a little bit of what the about the different options here. Uh, you've got different presets you can choose. Um, if you're actually wanting to uh, maybe uh, convert a logo, you know, I had to do this before when I worked at, a, at uh, a print and mail shop. There was times where I had to uh, scan in a logo at lower quality and we would actually end up printing it at very high quality. And uh, Here's the option that you would choose if you needed to resize a logo a lot larger than the uh, logo that you may have available. Um, so there's that one color logo. If you had a color picture, uh, you can get some really neat effects by choosing one of these options. Uh, here's some other ones here. And basically, uh, You'll just have to uh, play around on your own time, but uh, you'll see if you were to do this with images the uh, the really cool effects that you can get. But uh, let's just see what happens when we click on hand drawn sketch, since that's what this was. Okay, see so you'll notice that uh, it changed it quite a bit, and this is a preset. But even though it's a preset, you still have access to all the options that were changed, because basically that's all that happened when you clicked on the preset. All these numbers here changed. So um, if you'll notice here, when we change the threshold value, as we lower it, the lines get thinner. As we raise it, the lines get thicker. And actually, more of the image gets put in. Now, I won't pretend to explain or to know how to explain exactly how all the sliders work, but I will tell you, if, if, you, if you have time to experiment and you want to play around, you can get some really cool effects by uh, going back and playing around with these different sliders. Uh, and just because I'm in a hurry, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this video a little short. We'll go back to default, and that's the original way that uh, it edited it, just by opening the window here. So we're back at default. I'm going to go ahead and click Trace. That applies the tracing options. 
Now to save this as an image file, um, you can save it as two types of files. You can save it obviously as a Illustrator file by going to save as, and your option that pops up here is an Illustrator file, but or you can save it as a PDF from here. But let's say you want it as a, as a JPEG or a GIF image. Uh, you're going to go to File, Export, and you'll have all kinds of options down here. Um, I would choose JPEG for this particular one just because there's a lot of curves. Um, there are times when I would use GIF, a GIF image, which uh, I'm putting my foot in my mouth here because GIF isn't even an option. So I guess GIF is not something that I would use from Illustrator, but I do use it in other things that I do. Um, a PNG file, uh, J <clears throat> excuse me, JPEG and PNG are probably the two most used file extensions when it comes to what I do. So, but JPEG most of the time is uh, a smaller file. So let's go ahead and choose JPEG. Uh, name the file what you want. We'll name it uh, cave underscore doodle. And we'll hit save. Now your options that come up here, the quality with the black and white uh, doodle sketch. This really doesn't matter that much, but I don't ever really like to save anything at less than 8 quality. So... None of the other options here you should really ever have to mess with unless you're into advanced graphics. But as far as just displaying on the screen, the only thing that you'll need to mess with is quality. Once we hit OK, it's going to bring up a little uh, progress bar here. And then when it's done, you can go to wherever you save the file on your hard drive and open it up. So I hope that helped, and I'll talk to you guys soon.